Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Hashtag Ask What Go with myself and James Wild. All good, James? Yeah, really good, thanks, Rob. Uh, how about yourself? You good? All good, all good, thank you, James. Welcome, everyone. Hope you're well. Hope you all had a good week, and we're going to get on with a very quick, punchy sales, intel, data, hashtag Ask Co, property and finance update so let's go straight into it James and let's hit those numbers yeah thanks Rob in terms of the data this week we're into week 40 uh, new instructions this week three 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 um, uh, pretty uh, sort of good numbers in line with what we've seen in the last uh, uh, month or two there in terms of sales this week it has dropped we're at 83 for this week and um, in terms of the market performance and what we've been seeing in the market it's been quite it's been a positive few weeks that was a slightly unexpected drop that we've seen there and we're, we're going to monitor that but for the time being, I think we're going to put it down as a, a, a blip and a bit of a, a one-off in terms of that subdued uh, level of activity. Yeah, I'm not sure where that blip is from. It, it could be a, a reporting uh, uh, anomaly. I, I definitely don't see it as a trend. It's not a true re reflection of what we're seeing in terms of transactions and trades and how busy the market is. Valuations are very busy. Legals are busy and all the agents uh, we're speaking to are busy and conveyancing, etc. So um, definitely not seeing um, that in terms of workload and pipeline. It will, like you said, James, something we've got to watch and see how it um, transpires. Yeah, I mean, just as the deals have fallen and got over the line, we had a, an amazingly positive week last week, 220. So just in terms of how the uh, sort of the data is captured uh, and how the transactions fall week to week, I think it could be a, just a slight anomaly, as you say, but we'll bring you up to speed again next week on, on those sale figures. Um, I've been out quite a lot over the last week, seeing some really, really chunky prime, super prime purchases, transactions going through. Um, there's a really good still feel good factor out there um, and properties are, are really performing well, especially the house market in, in London and surrounding areas and, and, and home counties. Really, really good, strong performance and it seems pretty unrelenting. And I think you know, it's a positive sign. As we mentioned last week, and if you didn't pick that one up, you know, in inflationary economies like we're seeing at the moment, real estate, both commercially and residentially, is seen as a good asset class to invest in. And that could be spurring transactions and performance and price growth as well. So. I think that's going to be strong monitoring, monitoring required for the coming months, James. Definitely, yeah. And uh, just in terms of some of the uh, some of the other sort of, uh, sub markets, flexible office space, which we've spoken about a lot in the last eighteen months, just wanted to just give uh, uh, listeners, viewers a quick update there. The flexible office space provider, the office group known as TOG, uh, they've doubled their uh, workspace offering at the Gridiron Building in King's Cross uh, to occupy um, uh, the f floors one to four there, occupying the whole building, uh, adding an additional 28,000 square foot there, uh, one pan per square. So obviously having lots of inquiries there. They've, they've actually gone on to say uh, that since March this year, their inquiries have increased 175%. Um, you know, as, as firms, if they are moving, they may be seeking for a more flexible uh, office space requirement environment. Uh, <clears throat> Also, it said that King's Cross has seen a surge of inquiries of flexible space, with inquiries there alone now higher than some of the pre-pandemic levels. Um, you know, Rob, that's kind of one of the predictions we said as we're sort of starting to move out of the pandemic, hopefully, and uh, you know, people are coming back to the office, people are maybe re-evaluating uh, what office space they need, and especially as leases uh, come to an end, what, what um, their sort of business plan will be in terms of their um, mobility of their workforce. Absolutely, I, I think that it is one of the most fascinating aspects of of the, the the real estate market, commercially, obviously speaking, and the trend moving forward is is super interesting on how that space is taken up and the new 
the new way of working and the new demands and the new requirements and who's going to perform well and who's not. And um, watch this space. And De uh, definitely, yeah. Just in terms of a further. Uh, piece of information there. Uh, the Office Group has partnered uh, with the King's Cross Central Limited Partnership and they're going to be occupying one of the new build uh, towers in King's Cross, 170,000 square feet, being purpose built for flexible office space. Uh, the building there is currently under construction, it's going to be delivered to the market in 2024, so that further strengthens their positions. They already occupy uh, four locations in King's Cross, it's one of their main hubs, it's one of their uh, that sort of start up hub and uh, since its regeneration in uh, 2011 it's got the new N1C postcode it's been a, you know a real transformation master plan there just switching back to the, the the resi side of things and the prime super prime we talked in the last month about two of the most significant transactions that have taken place and both on Avenue Road one we mentioned last week at 33 million mm. and and previously a few weeks before it in the mid-20s, mid which puts that road in terms of housing um, houses or housing stock as one of the most expensive roads now in London in terms of single assets and, and houses and not apartments. And I, I and saw a, uh, something that's gone under one of the penthouses at One Hyde Park at 100 million plus. And so, it's, it's just fascinating that we're seeing some of the highest performing transactions taking place currently. And is this a thing, is, is this, is this going to continue? Are we going to see such incredible prices achieved for some of the best stock that there is in, in, in London? Yeah, I mean, Avenue Road, it's, it's one of those streets. It, it, it's a relatively busy thoroughfare, but in terms of its housing stock, it's got uh, very large detached villas with large gardens, off-street parking to the front. It, it ticks all the boxes and is obviously uh, sort of full of these trophy assets. And if you have a requirement for, for a house of, you know, 15, 20,000 square feet, there's not many places in central London you can go uh, to actually get that size of house, which is, I think, why it's been driven its popularity and um, I, I, I cycle down there, I go running down there quite a lot. There's been a lot of houses uh, under construction recently there as well so I don't think this will be necessarily uh, the end of these super prime transactions there in the coming years. That, that's the point uh, that I actually thought was the key one. There are so many knockdown rebuilds and a, another one on Avenue Road just come on the market um, at a, a, around the 35 figure where it's, it's a project and it's very much following the path of, you know, Bishop's Avenue and where that went and maybe a lot of the properties in Winnington looking for these large footprints, two, three, maybe four basement levels, depending on what you're getting planning for. And, you know, that is back in at the moment. That's what the buyer, the ultra high net worth buyer wants. and. And uh, I think we're going to see a lot of those development projects. I, I agree, Rob, and especially some of the uh, consulates that still exist on Avenue Road and some of the diplomats' houses that some of the consulates own, uh, where, where the countries maybe uh, re redeploy where they wish to be in terms of their, their position in London. Some more properties could potentially come to the market uh, there too. Great. Any other news for this week, James? Uh, just in terms of the, uh, the, the, the high street, really, in terms of contactless payments, uh, the limit for this is increasing to £100 on Friday the 15th of October um, and you know not everyone's obviously aware of that it's, it was announced in uh, March by the Chancellor um, that this limit would be increasing more than doubling from the existing limit £45 uh, it's a move which uh, as the Chancellor says it's going to make it easier than ever before for people to pay to their shopping uh, uh, restaurant bills, uh, coffee shops, and it's going to be a welcome boost uh, for retail, which they're hoping will protect jobs and also drive uh, growth across the economy. Great. And um, anything else this week? That's it from me. Great. Just a quick sporting uh, note before we we we, we go. Um, the the Newcastle transaction has gone through, which is a fascinating one. Um, you know, could it lead to? Champions League, Premier League trophies 
um, going to Tyneside. I mean, it, it's a, yeah. a, a fascinating story there. Yeah, it's going to be a sort of a, a period of rebuilding there. I bet they can't wait for the January transfer window there, but sort of with the richest owners in the world, I believe. Um, England obviously beat Andorra um, on, on Saturday 5 0, whilst they're uh, taking on Hungary in match day eight this evening of their uh, World Cup qualifier. Uh, France uh, obviously. Um, came from behind to beat Spain to win the Nations League. So a busy, busy week in sport. For anyone out there that you know was maybe laughing at the Nations League when it got brought in, I think if, if you saw the games this weekend and, and they were f fantastic matches, Spain, Italy, France and Belgium, arguably the four, top four teams in Europe outside maybe Germany and England, and, and they produced uh, stunning matches, Great entertainment, high-level football, and it was it was great to see. Um, we'll be back next week. Um, let's hope we've got some better f sales figures to report to everyone. Hope you're all well, and thank you as always for your tremendous support across all the platforms. And we look forward to catching up and see you all again soon. Take care, everyone. Thanks very much, everyone.